my name is Karthik Ayer. Um, I'm going to be uh, uh, showcasing uh, the electric violin, uh, but the topic of the performance is going to be uh, taking Indian classical music to the world, bringing the world to Indian classical music. Um, I'm basically uh, a fundamentally a uh, Carnatic uh, trained musician. I uh, started playing with brands, uh, got a little bit into Western classical, and I had the opportunity to collaborate with a lot of artists from different genres. And uh, uh, I'm quite excited to be here and to show you everyone uh, some of the tracks uh, that I've uh, collaborated on. Uh, uh, I think uh, Carnatic music, as, uh, as the global divides get smaller and smaller, there's more and more contemporary music coming. And I uh, lot, there's a lot of uh, possibilities for uh, uh, fusing Carnatic music with other other styles. Uh, before we, uh, before I go and perform a couple of uh, my tracks, uh, just to show you some some examples uh, 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 with respect to the songs that I've done, just to show the difference uh, between the traditional art form and and the the contemporary uh, styles, the possibilities. I'm going to I have two tracks uh, with me here. The first track uh, is uh, the very widely popular tukda of uh, Carnatic, uh, in any Carnatic kacheris, which is the English notes. Uh, I have here uh, a couple of versions. One is the traditional one with uh, Murudangam and uh, Gatam, and then I have a, a hip hop uh, hip hop version of the of the same track. Here goes. That was uh, Madre Mani Notes. Uh, next uh, audio example that I would like to show you is, uh, before we go on this, there's a lot of, lot of possibilities. Uh, when, when two musicians, uh, like one Carnatic musician, when he works with uh, another musician from a different genre, there's so many possibilities. As long as both the musicians you know, come from where they are and come to a common middle ground, uh, I've had the uh, opportunity to work with uh, pop, uh, jazz, uh, rock guys. The first track you heard uh, while I was setting up with was a collaboration with a very popular uh, rock guitarist called Tony Das from Bangalore. The next one uh, is, a, is a sort of a collaboration I did with uh, two Chennai-based musicians, uh, Naveen and uh, Alvin, and uh, we came out with a Latin-style Latin uh, version of uh, Nagumomu. Again, here I play the audio example of that.
So as you can see, the same track takes uh, different. Uh, it's just be. It's just me who's playing the violin, but. When you work with uh, different musicians from uh, different cultures, it just takes on a whole new meaning. Uh, Akila specifically asked us not to keep uh, talking less. Uh, I think I've talked enough. I'm going to go to the uh, next uh, part of the uh, uh, next part, which is to a lot of people are curious about uh, about the electric violin. So I just wanted to show you some of the uh, tonal possibilities of the electric violin before I move on to play uh, a couple of tracks. TJ, could I have the violin, please? So this is the clean tone of the violin. This is how it sounds like. kind of an effect. And there's a dark sounding uh, like hundred cellos uh, kind of uh, effect. Next, uh, there is a very weird effect. Uh, this is just something that came on my pedal board. It's called ethereal. I don't know what it is. It's just sort of a very phasey, phased out. I played with a very popular Carnatic singer recently, and uh, we were checking out tones on my pedal board. And when I came to this, uh, she was like, oh, there's a cat howling somewhere. You know, you could, you could shut that off. <laughs> and uh, recently I played uh, with my band Emergence. Uh, we played a, a cover of a popular Jimi Hendrix song called uh, Along the Watchtower. And uh, this was sort of a very guitar-based sound. I was trying to replicate uh, uh, Jimi Hendrix's uh, tone on the violin. Thank you. Uh, when we talk about uh, the sound experience, as the as the as the magazine this time talks about. I could think of only one track uh, that I had done. Uh, there is this uh, track that's called A Maiden in the Nude, uh, which is, which is uh, a sonic representation of, um, um, of uh, an ancient darbar uh, in, in, uh, in, in India, in South India, where, you know, dating back uh, uh, 600, 700 years ago, where the king, the ministers, uh, the priests, everyone is sitting. And there's uh, Kalyani, who's the, who's the maiden in the court, the court dancer. She tries to woo the a very reticent and introverted prince. The prince won't uh, take to his duty, so they try and use Kalyani to sort of, uh, you know, woo him. Uh, she's dancing for him. And this track is, uh, is a sonic uh, representation of this whole experience. Uh, I would request you to just close your eyes for this. It's just uh, there's nothing to see. It's just uh, more more to the more to the imagination than anything else. TJ, could you maybe reduce my violin a little bit? Thank you. 
Thank you. That was uh, Maiden in the Nude. Uh, the next track uh, is going to be uh, uh, a Western classical sort of uh, collaboration with a Western classical pianist called Don Diu uh, from France. Uh, and uh, I'm going to play Paridana Michite uh, along with the piano, which, is, which comes from the laptop now. Thank you very much.